Hello and welcome back to another video of Calc Nerd. So today's video is going to be on an 8x8 version of Sudoku. Um, the only reason it is not a 9x9 is because it, the screen dimensions are 8x16 on the home screen. So I could not make a 9x9 one, but it would be possible to make it on the graph screen. So let me know down in the comments uh, if you like Sudoku or if you'd like to see a 9x9 version of Sudoku. I would be happy to try to do that. And also, thank you for 90 subscribers. We just passed that milestone. Uh, so we're almost to 100. So thank you to everyone who is subscribed. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, I hope you do consider it. Thanks for uh, checking out my video. And let me show you what Sudoku is. Okay, now let me run program Sudoku. So as you can see, it places the numbers uh, 1 through 8. Sometimes it does skip one or two numbers. Uh, that's how I designed it because I find it's just a little bit more fun that way. Uh, you can have just a little bit more entertainment uh, because there's not a number, so it keeps you guessing just a little bit. And so basically, the objective of Sudoku, if you did not know, uh, this is an 8x8 Sudoku, as I mentioned earlier. And basically, what you have to do is in each given row or column, you have to have the numbers 1 through 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And you cannot have two of the same number, and you have to have one in each, and there cannot be one in each of either a column or a row. So there can't be a 6 over anywhere in here or a 6 anywhere in here. Uh, the reason I have 6 is because it's that top corner right there. So that is basically the premise of Sudoku. Uh, and as I said, this is an 8x8, so what you're going to do for the little grids, uh, which I'll explain in just a second, the grids are a 2x4 grid, so 2 on the y-axis and uh, 4 on the x-axis, so from this 6 to this 2, uh, that little grid right there, uh, that is what you have to also fill in with the numbers 1 through 8, so there can't be two 1s in a given grid, so if I put a 1 here, I can't also have a 1 here, because it is in the same grid, but I could have, uh, for example, a 1 here if I get rid of this 1 because now they're not in the same row. So that is basically how you play Sudoku and you have to fill up the whole entire board. Uh, my program does not include a checker uh, because it would run kind of slow and take up quite a bit of space. And I don't have a ton of space left on my calculator, so I kind of wanted to keep it small and uh, more simple to program and also to understand uh, but if you do have any ideas or anything for the future uh, let, leave me a comment I'd be happy to respond to your comment and also answer any questions that you might have about calculator programming in general or about this game I can uh, definitely help explain that to you and explain uh, some stuff about TI basic so now let me do a short little time lapse to show you uh, just me playing a little bit of Sudoku, and then I'll show you how you can program this on your own calculator. Okay, now let me show you how you can make program Sudoku on your own calculator. So this is a relatively simple program. It's not extremely long. Uh, it's not extremely short either, uh, but it's pretty simple. So I hope you do enjoy uh, the rest of the video and I hope you can get Sudoku working on your own calculator. So we're gonna start off with a clear home just to get rid of anything that could be on the home screen because we don't want any anything uh, to interfere with the gameplay. Delver matrix A, uh, fancy bracket, eight comma 13 store under the dimensions of matrix A. Del Delver A L1, excuse me, 8 store under the dimensions of L1 and L1 store to L2. So we're formatting L1 and then we're uh, taking that format of L1 and putting it into L2. It's just a more efficient way than also uh, Delvering L2 and uh, 8 store under the dimensions of L2 as well. Rand 8 store into L1. So L1 is a, our dummy list, I'm going to call it. And basically, we're going to sort. Uh, L2 eventually into what L1 is, uh, which generates a random sequence of numbers, uh, which is how I generate the Sudoku. So you're going to do RAND8 store into L1, like I said, uh, for A, comma 1, comma 8, A store into L2 at A, so uh, L2 at A, so L2 
2 at 1 is going to be 1 because a is 1, uh, and 2 is going to be 2, and so forth. So I'm just establishing the order first, and I just find that more efficient than uh, doing 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, it's just a little bit more efficient like this. Then sort A, L1, L2, so I'm sorting it into that random order. And for A, 1, 8, I'll put A, 5, quote, a decimal point or period, whatever you want to consider that. Uh, you can also do other things, but I find that the decimal point looks pretty good. For A, 1, 8, randint 5, 13, store into X. I'll put it A, X, L2 at A. Uh, L2 at A, store into the matrix A at A, X. I'll put it A, 4, quote, an I, and I'll put it A, 13, quote, an I. And matrix A, store into matrix B. 8, store into X, and 4, store into Y. Repeat until K is equal to 45. Get key, store into K. If sum of K is equal to 24, 25, uh, excuse me, 24, then 26, 25, 34, or 23, and the order does not actually matter, uh, just make sure that you get every single one of those numbers. So it probably is easiest just to do it in the same order. Uh, then I'll put it y comma x comma quote a space. Uh, if matrix A at y comma x, I'll put it y comma x comma matrix A at y comma x. So if you go over a number, then re-output that number uh, that you went over so it just doesn't delete it off the screen. If not matrix A at y comma x, so basically if matrix A at y comma x is equal to zero, I'll put it y comma x comma quote a decimal point. If k is equal to 23 and matrix B at y comma x, not matrix B at y comma x, a zero store in the matrix A at y comma x. Min 12 comma max 5 comma x plus k is equal to 26 minus k is equal to 24 store in the x. Uh, min 8 comma max 1 comma y plus k is equal to 34 minus k is equal to 25 store in the y. And the reason I do, uh, this is the movement code, by the way. The reason I do the movement code now is because I can keep that original position and not store it into different variables. And so it's more efficient if I do it at the end here uh, because the variables then don't have to be restored into a different variable. So I know what your last position was, uh, is basically what that is for. Then I'll put it y comma x comma quote a plus end. If sum of k is equal to 72, comma 73, comma 82, comma 83, comma 84, comma 92, comma 93, comma 94. So that is our number keypad. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and excluding 9. Uh, the reason I have to do this is uh, so it excludes 9, because then this right here, which I got off TI Basic Developer, uh, it's a really great site. I hope you do check out TI Basic Developer. I'll have a link in the description of the video. Uh, TI Basic Developer is a really great online community of uh, people who love TI Basic programming. Uh, and I found this resource on there, which basically it returns whatever key you press. So it's pretty cool. So then we have K multiplied by 102 is not equal to K. Minus 13 multiplied by the integer of k divided by 13 multiplied by 2 is greater than absolute value of 5 minus absolute value of 5 minus absolute value of k minus 83 store into a. So that is a pretty complex line. Uh, and honestly, I understand it mostly, but I'm not going to attempt to explain it. Uh, it is a pretty valuable thing and it's extremely efficient. Uh, so just make sure that you type that in right because it will not turn... Uh, return the correct number if you don't have it typed in correctly. If not, matrix B at y comma x, then A is stored in the matrix A at y comma x. I'll put at y comma x comma A. And, 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 and there's three ends right there. And that is the whole entire program. Like I said, it's not a really difficult program. Uh, probably the hardest part is that line uh, to establish what key you press. But other than that, it's a pretty fun and efficient program. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. It lets me know that you're enjoying my content and that you really like what I put out. And I'll keep making videos. So uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.